Shabbat Shalom. As we offer our words of prayer, it is also important to stop and offer words of Torah on Shabbat. And it has been a long week. Last week was a week with lots of confusion and fear in the wake of the attack on the Capitol building. And here we are now. It's 10 days after that. Um, and it's fitting that our Torah portion is all about the plagues and oppression and Pharaoh's heart getting hardened and the people of Israel getting oppressed more and more because it kind of matches how I feel as I've been watching this week that there is this oppression and senseless hatred and power plays that are going on and that there is, you see in Exodus, God and Moses coming forward again and again in so many different ways with each plague, with different words, with different signs and symbols to stand up to it with force because they see this is not what it's supposed to be. And so we are going to let justice well up like waters and righteousness in his mighty stream. And they stand up to the bullying and the harsh oppression of Egypt and the Pharaoh. You see this, and you hear the people of Israel, and the line that keeps going through my head is a refrain, a line we say all the time, O say shalom bim romav, hu ya'a say shalom, aleinu v'al kul Yisrael v'imru, amen. I feel like the people of Israel as they're watching this with each plague are saying, O say shalom, maker of shalom in the high heavens, Maker of where, where you got everything figured out out there, bring it to us, to all Israel. We got to get out of here. Help us fix it. Take care of us. Make us whole. There is shalom out there. We need shalom here. And you see as they stand up and they have these plagues and we'll be getting out of Egypt within the next week in our Torah portion. But I read that. And I hear that, that way that we're supposed to stand up like prophets and be like Moses, and we're supposed to fight all of that. And I, this week, didn't have a whole lot of energy ready to go off and charge and do that. It's really overwhelming. It's really scary. And with between the pandemic and the politics, there was time and again where I was like, oh, say shalom. I keep calling out to the maker of peace, and I don't see the peace coming. It, something's not working in that prayer, because it's not, I want, why doesn't that work, right? We say it, we say it at the end of Kaddish, we say it often at the end of silent prayer, oh, say shalom, bring that shalom to here. And there were points in time where I just, I got tired of wanting the big shalom out there in here because I couldn't can't figure out how mustering the energy to do it. And then in the midst of this week, there I was reading the book What Am I Missing by Rabbi Joseph Adelheit. And Rabbi Adelheit will actually be with us tomorrow morning using his book and using Torah to teach us. And so we hope you will join us at 930 tomorrow morning. And talk about a Torah within a Torah, within a teaching, within a teaching, because as I am getting ready for his teaching tomorrow, I'm going to do a little bit of his, of the teaching that's in his book, which is actually about the, using the, it, you'll see in just a moment. It's rather incredible as I think about it, um, because he is teaching a, a different way of thinking about Osei Shalom. A different way of thinking about maker of peace, bring peace to all of us. And he tells, and if you have re read, and now I'm going to blank on the name. Um, Cantor is going to say it as soon as I tell the story. There's, it, it, um, she's not going to know what I'm talking about until I actually tell it. So here I go. Stachman of Bratslav tells, apparently tells a story. I know there's actually a book version of this. Um, that as you, I tell this, some of you are going to say, Rabbi, here's what it is. Um, tells a story about a guy who has a dream 
Um, and his dream is that if he goes to a certain city and digs in a particular place, and in that place he follows all of these clues, he's going to find an incredible treasure. He needs it. He is trying to take care of his family. He's trying to take care of his community. And so he goes off on this grand adventure, hill and dale, river and forest, marauders, all sorts of stuff. And he gets to the city and he sees it's well guarded and it's a really secure location. He has no idea how he's going to get to that space where that treasure is that he keeps envisioning in this dark and dank place that he's not sure how to get to. And he sees a person, a man on patrol, and he goes up and he's like, look, maybe if I go explain what's happening, they'll let me in and I'll dig and I'll find it and we'll, everyone will live happily ever after. So he goes up to the guard and he says his whole spiel, his whole story, I had a dream and a treasure and da 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 da. The guard looks at him and is like, Wait, what? He says, look, this is, this is what's going to happen. It's, I, it's a prophecy. I, I know this is true. The guard says, no, that's the, I, I had a dream too. I had this crazy dream the mirror of yours that I was going to be on patrol and some traveler from a faraway place is going to come and tell me this incredible story about a treasure and that I actually have to tell him that if he goes to this place and he starts describing a house on a lane with a cellar and if he goes to that place and he digs in the cellar there's the treasure. The guy looks at him and says wait what? And the guard explains it all again. He says that's my house that you're describing. And the guard says, I don't know. That's what my dream was. And so the man goes back, river, dale, hill, mountain, forest, trees, back home into his basement, digs in his cellar. Cellars are, by the way, rooms that are underground in houses. They have them, apparently, in some places. And there, in fact, finds the treasure. Um, Cantor, you have because we've had this conversation, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. There is a book that somebody has written. as a. Uh, this is a common story and trope about this traveler on this search. Rabbi Edelheit, in sharing that story, says he read it, and it didn't quite click for him until he read the words of Lawrence Kushner, Rabbi Lawrence Kushner, talking about a missing piece. And Lawrence Kushner says this. There must have been a time when you entered a room and met someone, and after a while you understood that unknown to either of you, there was a reason you had met. You changed the other, or the other was changed by you. By word or by deed, or just your presence, the errand had been completed. You were a little bewildered, or humbled, or grateful, and it was over. Each life this is what struck me both about Nachman's story, but also Rabbi Kushner's commentary that Rabbi Edelheit bases his book upon. He says, each life is a pieces of jigsaw puzzle. For some, there are more pieces. For others, puzzle is a little more difficult to assemble. Some to be, be born with a nearly completed puzzle, and so it goes. Souls going this way and trying to assemble the myriad parts. But know this. No one has within themselves all of the pieces to their puzzle. Like before the day when they used to seal the jigsaw puzzles in cellophane, ensuring that all the pieces were there. So you would think that each of us has all of our puzzles. It's all in a bag. We just have to lay it on the table and put it all together. But in fact, it's a little more complicated than that. Everyone carries at least one and probably more pieces of someone else's puzzle. Sometimes they know it. Sometimes they don't. And when you present your piece, with, which is worth less to you to another, whether you know it or not, whether they know it or not, you are a messenger of the Most High. It is a very different understanding of Ose Shalom. It is true, there is fragmentation and brokenness, but it's not that I'm waiting for some Ose Shalom Bim Romav to bring Ose Shalom Bim Romav. That Shalom, not to bring that Shalom Aleinu. I'm not waiting for the God out there to bring order and here. The, all the parts are either in here or out there. And it's our job 
interacting with each other, trading parts and pieces, making content, making connections, weaving our threads together. In fact, just before service, I was making the random comment about growing cotton, and Sheldon Cantor said beautifully, isn't it amazing that the fibers of cotton are very short, but there's a way to weave them together into an infinite string. It's not that there's shalom out there. It's all in here. But it's not just me, and it's not just you. It's all of us finding ways to work together. The pieces are out there. The pieces are in here. We have to come to a table together and work with each other to make that sense of shalom. Beautiful statement in Pirkei Avot. When two people sit to study Torah together, the Shekhinah, the divine presence, rests between them. That's that image of shalom. We even say it so many times in our prayer for redemption, and I know it's Natalie Feldman's, it's one of my favorite too, too that we join hands and walk together. That's why I wanted that picture of Heschel and Martin Luther King Jr. The two of them worked together. They strengthened each other. They taught each other. They lifted each other up. Even as they tried to lift up the wet world, but they were able to do that lifting and bring so many people, communities and individuals to a place that was high and holy because they were walking hand in hand together, teaching each other and sharing together. Those moments where we find and say, wait, here's a puzzle piece that's not mine, but here is a puzzle piece that can complete you. As I come before you, and that idea of hands touching hands and souls touching souls, and maybe it's not trying to pull the big shalom out there, but trading little bits and pieces, threads back and forth, and weaving a shalom from in here. Don't think that we are not Martin Luther King Jr. and Abraham Heschel, and therefore we can't do that. Don't think for a minute that our acts of baking barakas together or studying Torah together or singing songs together is not a civil rights march. Because the reality is we don't know. We have no idea whether it's a mundane everyday event or some big event, we don't know what piece of connection, what piece of knowledge, what spark of friendship will be that piece that slides into place to create that shalom that we seek and we need. Here, on this Shabbat, we are challenged because it might not just be the peace that we're looking for, but here, it's the peace that we might carry, and it's the work of finding each other and sharing with each other and connecting with each other. It is definitely more challenging to do this in our day and age. But when you look at the brokenness of our world, when you look at that darkness, when you look at the sharpness, isn't it worth all of that energy, all of that effort, those ways, little and big, of reaching out with each to each other? Who say shalom bin Ramav, who ya say shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'al kol Yishvei Tevel v'imru, amen. May the one who gave me pieces of peace, threads and puzzle pieces, help me learn how to reach out, to connect with each other so that we build that sense of shalom in our world. Amen and Shabbat Shalom.